Welcome to IGN Live from Gamescom. I'm Damon Hatfield. I'm here with Ash, who is game director on Assassin's Creed Origins. Ash, welcome to the IGN stage. Thank here you. Here at Gamescom 2017, kicking the show off. Uh, we got a nice, really long look at Assassin's Creed Origins back at E3. Yep. You're going to give us a little bit of a different look at the game today, is that right? Yeah, yeah. we're here for, for Gamescom. We have uh, a new area of the world that we're uh, unveiling. Uh, we're talking a lot more about the, the characters of this historical time period, like Cleopatra and Caesar. <laughs> Here we're showing off uh, the great city of Memphis. Yeah, so I, maybe a lot of people don't realize Memphis is a, a, an ancient, very old city very in old Egypt, city. right? Yeah, One yeah, of the oldest a, cities. Even when we get to it in our time period yeah. here, it's already 3,000 years old. It's so amazing. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. So it's, it's, it's rich with the religious history, with art and culture, and we wanted to represent that and have, you know, have players go through that because it's quite cool. Mm -hmm. Here we see this is uh, a deity called the Apis Bull. Hmm. So Egyptians at this time period inside it's Memphis uh, believed in this bull as a god, hmm. so. uh, a living bull. And so they would decorate it, uh, they would have uh, the Apis Bull Festival. And so this is a quest that we're seeing right here where um, eventually as a player you get to experience all these kind of really religious rituals and, and really wonderful stuff from Egypt. All right, so what are we doing in this mission here? So in this quest, uh, we get to it. So this is one of the main quests. You're, you're hunting after uh, a target named the Lizard and um, right now what we saw was that the Apis Bull was sick and there's a belief that the lizard somehow is involved in getting this, mm. this bull sick. Now, the bull is a deity for the Memphis uh, inhabitants, so mm. it's a very important that Bay gets involved. He's a Magi, which means that he's kind of a protector of the Egyptian way of life. Uh, so, so he's there to help the people, and uh, this is going to lead him eventually to, to his target, the lizard. Yeah, it's like the, so the, me the Magi were real. Right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's historically accurate. Yeah, that's accurate. historically accurate. So they were a line of warriors who protected uh, pharaohs, worked for the pharaohs. Mm -hmm. They were sort of almost like a secret service. And the idea is here we're, we're at the end of that line. When the Greeks came in with Alexander the Great, mm -hmm. they kind of started moving away from that, replacing those people. And Bayek being uh, <laughs> one of the few <laughs> left. We're doing a little crocodile hunting yeah, you know, over there. Random crocs in the streets. <laughs> So here we're, we're in a fort location. We're kind of jumping through a bunch of different locations right now. But here to show this is a, a military location. There's a guy that you have to save eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another side quest that if you're going through Memphis, you might run into this little child that's running away. Yeah, we're sort of jumping around this mission here, but we're definitely getting a, a sense of the mobility that we have to, exactly. to maneuver around these cities. Exactly. M Memphis being one of the cities that we felt you know, showcases um, uh, the navigation uh, in a very fluid, organic environment, where in Alexandria it's maybe a bit more organized. You know, Alexandria is a cosmopolitan, it was more Greek influenced. Memphis being much more ancient Egyptian, organic, tighter, uh, much busier. Uh, here we're running to some thugs in the streets who are using uh, kids to, to mm. steal and do some of their bidding. So, so, of course, Bayek jumping in, helping out. So we're seeing some combat here. This is probably a good opportunity to uh, explain a little, bit, a little bit about this yeah. new combat system. Yeah, uh, th so the new combat, that was one of the things, one of our big intentions um, when we started this project. So we started this project right after Black Flag. It was four years ago. Yeah. And we had this intention to, to reinvent the, the experience of Assassin's Creed and combat being one of those elements. So we, we've been pushing very hard to, to bring in a lot more gameplay, a lot more depth, you know, have value in the gear and equipment that mm -hmm. you find in the world. Uh, bring in the RPG element, you know, make sure that it works with bows. Here we see the bow. Uh, making sure that you know, melee combat into the bow works really well and vice versa. Yeah. That you have value of switching. It's one of the great truths of gaming that RPG elements will improve just about <laughs> anything. You can, if you add RPG elements, it's going to be a, a bonus. Absolutely. <laughs> no, we've, uh, we've been excited to, to take this uh, route uh, with Assassin's Creed. We've kinda been kind of slowly doing it for a while. You know, the, the yeah. naval combat of Black Flag yeah. was at the, you know, in the heart of it, an RPG system underneath the hood. And for this game, we just wanted to, to blow it up and actually make it, you know, a proper element of the game. So you have a, a, a large weapon system, right? Uh, a yeah. wide variety of weapons, so players are going to be able to uh, choose the weapon style that feel, they feel fits them. It, exactly. We have, a t we have a ton of weapons, so there's eight categories of weapons, but even within them, uh, you have a lot of rarities, attributes, uh, stats that kind of modify and tweak the behaviors. So for example, we're seeing a spear, but uh, a spear that does bleeding damage, hmm. uh, you know, is slightly different than a spear that might be poison tipped. So the way you sure. use it, the way you think about it might slightly change. And this is what we wanted to, to see uh, across the game. Here, this is an ability that uh, Bayek has to be able to kind of, let's say, meditate and allow time to move forward. Hmm. Uh, this is a way to decide, you know, I want to infiltrate at night. 
because I see, it gives yeah. me some advantages. Sure. Uh, you know, the guards sleep at night, stuff like sure. that. Sure. So you have a day-night cycle. Full oh, yeah. day-night cycle, yeah. and even the, you know, as we saw there, the players are able to manipulate it even for their own mm. needs. We have um, we have an AI system that that gives the AI in the world. All NPCs in the world have schedules, agendas, and so on needs. And the idea is that it plays off of the day-night cycle. So sometimes mm. people need to sleep. Sometimes you know, bandits are hunting out at night. So the player gets to to manage that by by moving time forward. I don't know if you've noticed this. But this game is gorgeous. <laughs> this game is so pretty. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We, we have you know world-class, amazing, talented artists, uh, technical artists, programmers yeah, that like bring this world to life. And uh, you know it's thrilling to be able to make a, an open-world game and not worry about it looking beautiful. That's uh, you know yeah. one <laughs> one thing off our back. We don't have to worry yeah. about that. We can concentrate on the gameplay. The team is super talented, and we're really proud with uh, what they've been able to achieve. It's also a very cool setting. There aren't too many video games set in Egypt. There are a lot of games that like will touch it, they'll like you'll visit there in one yeah. you'll visit Egypt in one level, but not yeah. too many games that are set entirely there. No, and, and you know even even uh, a lot of mainstream media we we wanted to make a game where people felt or, or an experience I should say that people yeah. felt like wow, this was somehow like a very authentic uh, Egyptian experience that was something that somehow balanced uh, being credible but also mystical somehow and mm. No, that, that was uh, an exciting opportunity for us. We felt that it didn't really exist. So tombs here, we're looking at a tomb. Yeah. You know, tombs and temples were very important, and we wanted to be able to explore these environments, have value for them, and even gives us an opportunity, you know, to do gameplay where it's more structured. You know, it's, just a, it's not the wild, open world. It's, you know, there's puzzles, there's yeah. uh, navigation, there's uh, hidden knowledge under these places. Um, so, so it's really cool to be able to take advantage of that. What are we... Uh I know we're, we're investigating this pyramid temple here. Yeah. Well, have we well, found something down here? Well, what do we do? Something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so a lot of the tombs and temples, they have, uh, there's a lot of stuff to find. We wanted that exploration and discovering something really has meaning for the player, hmm. whether it's in a tomb or underwater, such as this. And so you always are finding narrative value, uh, gameplay rewards, stuff mm. like that. In a tomb, uh, that's one place where you can find, let, let's say, ancient knowledge that gives you an ability point. Mm. So the idea is Bayek is learning something that helps him uh, improve himself, if you will. Sure. Uh, there are other things to find inside tombs and temples, but uh, we'll leave that uh, to not spoil anything. There's sure. some nice surprises sure. for people. So here you can see the, the draw distances are, yeah. are stunning. Yeah, uh, climbing really a pyramid, yeah. you can pretty much climb every pyramid. Every point you can see in the world, you can get up there or slide down the pyramid if you want. How many pyramids are in the game? You, oh you know, boy. Is there a number? Oh man. You know, we've put 333 <laughs> pyramids in the game. Um, uh, for sure, all of the pyramids that are in the Giza Plateau. I don't know how many. Oh my god. That's, <laughs> oh, the team's going to kill me You have to that. check with the team. <laughs> uh, so our new protagonist, uh, Bayek, is Bayek, that his name? Yes. Uh, what can you tell us about him? So Bayek is, uh, uh, he's, uh, quickly his background is he's a native of Siwa. Uh, here we're seeing a, a scene actually with Bayek uh, and Cleopatra. Uh, that woman in the center mm -hmm. is um, uh, a new character that we're introducing here at Gamescom. Her name cool. is Aya. Uh, she is from Alexandria, but at a very young age moved to Siwa. Mm -hmm. And her and Bayek grew up together, trained together. Uh, she's not a Magi herself, but she believes in the in the training and their philosophies, hmm. and they get married. And the idea Spoilers, is, geez. yeah, yeah. So, so we start the game. They're already married. They're husband and wife uh, in an Egyptian style. Hmm. Um, but the idea is that something has happened in their village of Siwa, and it propels them on this journey to try to figure out why why did this have to happen? Who are the people behind this tragedy? That we won't really say what it is, um, but we wanted to show how a husband and wife that have the same goal, but have a slightly different look mm -hmm. uh, at the world. Sure. How they can come together, solve their issues, uh, and eventually this coupling, this marriage, gives birth to the brotherhood that we know from AC1. Mm. So that was, that's kind of the idea. So, we're, so Aya is a new character we're introducing. We're super excited about her. Um, here we just got to see a little glimpse of her. This is to be continued. Thank you for playing The Lizard's Mask. So that's <laughs> this is where the demo would have ended. But we're gonna watch to see a little more here. Is it? Yeah, exactly. So the what, what we have here at Gamescom is really showing uh, like a, a, a bit of a main quest, some side quest stuff for the mm -hmm. open world activities of Memphis. Um, we didn't want to spoil too much, so we stopped the quest there because mm -hmm. uh, at this point you start going after your target, the lizard, and figuring out who he is really and his role in the world. I see. And so we didn't want to spoil that. Um, but of course, we were the whole world, uh, the the Memphis world part is open right now, and so people are just. They can run through, mm -hmm. get some abilities, find some equipment, 
meet some of the, the inhabitants of, yeah. of Memphis and so on. We're, we were, we're taking a look at uh, some of the uh, equipment menus here, weapons yep. menus and uh, uh, armor and stuff. Yep. Can you speak to that? Uh, everything has a number on it. I assume that's the, the level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, fo the, the whole gear system, uh, the abilities, everything, it's, it's, it's a very uh, deeply driven RPG mechanic. Um, so the equipment, you know, you have, uh, you have your shields, you have all your melee weapons, you have two bows that you can slot in, you have your tools, uh, your mount, and mounts, you know, they range from horses, camels, chariots. Mm. There's many other vehicles in the world. Uh, so we've given uh, quite a few ways for players to kind of find the play style they prefer. In the ability menu, you can craft uh, or you can create the, the kind of character you want is, is our ideal. You know, whether you're a warrior style or a stealthy mm. ninja assassin if you want, or a ranger. You know, we have now yeah. a shooting mechanic is very important to the game. The idea is you can create whatever kind of class of character you want, or even a hybrid class if you wish. And uh, that goes through abilities and gear and so on. So we're running around town here. Yeah. Do, we, are we, do we have a, an objective, or are we just enjoying the sights? <laughs> so I think right now we're, uh, we're just looking at uh, one of the big temples. So this is uh, the Temple of Ta, one of the biggest temples uh, in the world, actually. Mm. Um, it's a beautiful place. So we've done a lot of research to bring this place to life. Um, effectively here, a quest just ended. So this is the Gamescom-specific build. So the, mm. the quest ends here. Um, what the person is searching for right now is what we call a papyrus. Uh, these are puzzles that have been kind of left in the world or documents that have been left by someone hmm. that uh, allow you to access uh, some, some great stuff. I don't want to ruin <laughs> what it is. Uh, some surprises in there. Sure. Um, I think here we're just kind of trying to climb a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Doing our best. <laughs> uh, what, what role does Cleopatra play uh, in the game yeah. and the story? So that, that's another big thing right now mm -hmm. is uh, in the, the context of the game, we're in 49 BCE. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, this is a wonderful time period because Egypt already has a lot of mystery and uh, um, value at this point of ancient mm -hmm. Egypt. Um, but it's at the moment of its demise. You know, the soon the line of pharaohs is about to end. So mm -hmm. Cleopatra being the last pharaoh of Egypt. Uh, here, we're at a point where she's, uh, she's the exiled queen. So when her father died, Ptolemy XII, he gave the, the pharaohdom to her and her brother, Ptolemy XIII. And uh, they had a civil war. So Ptolemy XIII ended up pushing her out. He was a, a boy king, he was manipulated, mm. and he pushed her out of the country. She ends up uh, kind of trying to build a mercenary army and coming back to take her throne. And she does that with the help of Caesar. Mm. So Julius Caesar famously is coming to Egypt. He's chasing after an, a Roman named Pompey. Pompey coming to Egypt. Yeah. Uh, he gets killed, Caesar allies with Cleopatra and helps her ascend the throne. So it's a really wonderful, intense time period where a lot of stuff happened, and this is the journey, the context that we, we propose to our players. Yeah, I know the broad strokes of, of, of all that <laughs> from the HBO show Rome. Yeah. Well, that's right, that's right. Excellent. The, just the broad strokes of all that. Yes, yeah, so you're telling a fictional story, but you're also like including uh, all the threads of what really happened. Of, right? of course, this is one of the hallmarks of AC. I mean, it's, yeah. it's important for us to meet these wonderful historic uh, characters or, or people, actual people, in these historic events. So you know, you know, the meeting of uh, of, of Caesar and Cleopatra is a famous sure. moment sure. where you know she's she's kind of like uh, brought into his uh, presence yeah. and. They have, a, they have a meeting overnight, and that's famously how they, <laughs> they, they get together. Nine months later, they have a child named Caesarian. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's one of all hallmarks to, to interweave our narrative within true history. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we are making fiction, sure. uh, obviously. But um, it's a lot of fun to be able to propose how does a character like Bayek end up meeting these people, and what are their interactions together. So it's, uh, it's fun. So we're exploring another pyramid. We've seen, uh, we've seen right, some, some horse back riding, yep. and we've seen yep. some hunting with some yep. crocodiles. There's also predator companions, is that correct? Is that <laughs> in a sense, in, in a, a sense, sense yes. Okay. Um, it's, uh, so it's one of the abilities you have in the game. Uh, so there's a ton of fauna, a ton of animals in the world. Hmm. Uh, we put a lot of effort to really bringing Egypt to life. Um, and uh, one of the abilities that you can purchase to have is, is to be able to tame animals. So whether it's a hippo, a croc, a lion, a hyena, <laughs> You, you can tame these, and they'll follow you. They'll come with you. They'll uh, they'll help you fight, and and uh, hmm. it's one of the ways to kind of let's say manipulate the environment to get your objective done. Sure. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're adding a lot to Assassin's Creed. You're bringing yes. a lot of new ideas to For Assassin's sure. Creed. Is yeah. there is there one particular element that you're like the most excited about or the most proud of? 
Um, I, I would say, you know, one thing for, for AC, we've always tried to push the combat system because combat is important for us. Hmm. Um, it's as important as stealth. You know, right now, especially in this campaign, we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, combat, but I would tell people that we're pushing stealth uh, just as much. Um, the thing is, the combat system, it's always very tricky. You want to get something that has a lot of depth, but sure. also, you know, a mainstream audience could enjoy it. And I think we found that balance where we, you know, it's, it's a beautiful uh, feature to play with. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of variety, lots of uh, enemies. And it gave us the opportunity to do a lot of boss fights. So we have a lot of, finally, AC has a lot of boss fights and super unique, epic boss fights. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, I love the combat system. I'm super proud of the team for, for what they've achieved with this. And I'm, I'm thrilled for people to be able to try it and, and see how far they can push the system. Is this a puzzle we're trying to work through here? Yeah, like exactly. A, like so environmental puzzle. Exactly. So this is part of the fun of some of the tombs is is uh, exploring the tombs. So sometimes it's a navigation puzzle. Sometimes in this case it's a it's a proper environment puzzle. Uh, other times you might have some surprise uh, enemies to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, so we've used uh, tombs and temples to try to provide like a more uh, you know uh, defined gameplay because mm -hmm. the environment it's much more constrained. Uh, the cool thing is we you know to represent Egypt authentically. Um, for everything that is known in actual tombs and temples, we've recreated it uh, to mm -hmm. its fullest capacity. So the inside of the Great Pyramid, Khufu's Pyramid, it's, it's really the actual uh, uh, corridors, chambers. Of course, we've added yeah. in our own sure, sure, sure. chambers that have been lo haven't been found <laughs> yet yeah. with our own lore. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, we've, uh, we've tried to really be authentic on that level and to propose gameplay that would, be s that would make sense for that environment. Sure. And have you tried to do that with locations like Memphis as well? To sort of yeah. like recreate. Oh, for sure. Uh, Alexandria, Memphis, yeah. all our cities, uh, uh, Heliopolis, uh, Crocodopolis, all these cities, mm -hmm. um, we've really tried to recreate them as authentically as we do. But this has always been, again, a hallmark of AC. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, you've probably turned off a lot of elements of the HUD for this demo. Uh, is there still an, an, a mini map option to bring up to? Uh, actually, what, yourself, we're what we're seeing right now is uh, there's nothing that's been turned off. It's really? The, the HUD is, is there. Is it? <laughs> when you're inside mm -hmm. a tomb. Okay, okay. Uh, the idea is, uh, you know, the, we have uh, we have a lot of different HUD options. You can yeah. have the HUD always on. You can have it completely off, or you sure. can have it more dynamic as it is right now. Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're, so we've decided actively to remove the minimap. Interesting. What we found was, you know, we, we, we do a lot of eye tracking, a lot of testing, and what mm -hmm. we found was is we build these really stunning, beautiful worlds, mm -hmm. beautiful characters, and people's eyes are stuck in just a little they corner. They just the map. That's interesting. Uh, and it became, honestly, I think it became a crux for us to, to drop feedback for players. Huh. And so early on, we said, you know, we want people to be immersed in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so we challenged ourselves by removing the minimap to say, can we find other ways to give peop uh, players the feedback they need to play the game? Mm -hmm. The idea is not to take away feedback, but to give them the feedback, but more ingrained in the world, uh, more you know, stronger language in the environment to, to help them understand what they need to do and where they need to go. Sure. So yeah, we've removed the minimap. Wow, that's There's, really interesting. Uh, we have a compass, uh -huh. but um, we wanted people to be really focused on the game world and, and, and reading the environment to understand what they need to do. Wow, that's pretty. That's uh, a bold decision, I would say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of. <laughs> it seems like there's actually a lot of bold decisions uh, going into this game. Yeah, we, we've, uh, we challenged ourselves. We, we needed to modernize the series. We needed to bring something fresh and new. So, yeah, uh, yeah we, we took a lot of bold decisions, and I, I hope people are, are going to be happy with it. Yeah. I, I hope the fans who have stuck with us for a long time are also excited to sure. see this new stuff. Yeah, I know I'm excited. Uh, Assassin's yes. Creed Origins is out October 27th. I uh, can't wait to play it. Yeah. Ash, thank can't you so wait. much for coming by the show. Uh, but don't go anywhere. Real quick, uh, the I IGN First team got a behind-the-scenes look at Assassin's Creed Origins. Let's take a look.